we're now going to do a little bit of a demo for you. And for this demo, it's going to be in two parts. First, we're going to go and we're going to just talk about ignition and its functionality, the driver itself. We're going to connect to a device. We're going to show you how you would import tags, create tags, and then use those tags. And that'll kind of show you what the building blocks are. And at that point, I'm going to pass it off to William. He's going to then take you through what you could do with those building blocks, right? So uh, an actual application built in Ignition. And so with that, let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right. So for those who may not be familiar with Ignition, when you first install Ignition, you get this. This is called the Gateway Web Page. And this is where you go to do your initial configuration. And so here along the side, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Config tab. And this is where I could start to go and configure my gateway, right? And I could do things like set up redundancy, add new modules, all that kind of stuff, configure my users. But when we come down here, you'll see under OPC UA, Ignition has a built-in OPC UA server, I have this page called Device Connections. And when I go to Device Connections, you can see I've got a few real PLCs that I'm connected to right now. And I also have a simulated PLC. Ignition has a built-in simulator you can use you know, that are already configured. And in a second here, we're gonna go and we're gonna create a new device and we're gonna connect up to an additional Mitsubishi PLC. But I did wanna come real quick and show you another feature of our OPC server, which is uh, we have what's called an OPC quick client that can just act as a client to our built-in OPC server. And if I go into that, I can see my devices. And some devices, like these Mitsubishi devices, when you first connect them, the the protocol itself does not support browsing. And so I can't actually see the tags that exist on my PLC. Other protocols do support that, right? Where I can actually come in and I can see all of my configured tags. And so I just wanted to show that real quick. Uh, once we connect to a device, we're gonna talk about addressing and we'll come back and show you what it looks like in this OPC quick client. But just wanted to, to show you when you don't have any tags, it looks like this, an empty tags folder. So now I'm gonna come back here, we're gonna go to device connections and we're gonna do what I said. We're gonna create a new device. Now, is Mitsubishi our first driver? No, we have many drivers for many different kinds of devices out there. But today we're gonna to show you connecting up to a Mitsubishi device. And so in my case here, I'm gonna be connecting up to an, uh, an RO1 CPU. It's gonna be an IQR series, but this is where you could come and choose uh, whichever series of device that you have. And then I'm gonna come in here and put in the IP address of my particular device here, which is as seen there. And then uh, for my port, it's not actually, uh, my program's not set up on 1025, it's on 1030. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that here. If I had a separate local address I needed to define, I could do that here if I wanted to change my gap size or my priority ratio, you know, I could do all those kinds of things here. But in my case here, all I really needed to do was give it a name, give it uh, a host name or IP address, and define the port. And with that, I can say connect. And you can see here, it added this new device connection. And you can see that our status is connected. Now, with that, as I said before, right, it's not going to automatically browse all those tags, right? So I can see that that device exists here. I can see there's a tags folder, still no tags. Well, I could go now and I could manually create each tag individually inside Ignition. And we have documentation that goes through and talks about the addressing of this, right? Where I could go and define each individual address one at a time, but who's got time for that, right? And so if I come back to my device connections here, I can actually go in and I can say more and go to addresses. And it brings me to you know the spot where I could come in and say, you know, oh, this is my D0, uh, D0, I could give it a description and I could start adding all my addresses in one spot here. Or even faster, I can keep track of all of my tags inside a CSV file. And so I'm gonna come in here, I have a pre-built CSV. And in fact, just to show you real quick what that CSV looks like before I import it, pull this over here. Uh, in this case here, I've got all of my paths there and then I have all of the names of my different tags and there's actually over 4,000 tags in this CSV file and so if I come in here and I choose that file it's going to take that 
and it is going to import those all in. I've now got all my paths, I've got all my addresses. And so with that, I'll just go ahead and say save configuration. And if I come back to that OPC quick client, I am now going to see uh, my tags folder is populated. I've got all these different tags that have been added here. And if I came into, uh, we'll say D, and I wanted to actually see the value of this D0, then I could do a read and I can see that it successfully was able to pull this value out of the PLC. So with that, we have a connection to a device. We're able to import the CSV that has all my tags in it. And then I'm you know, able to view them in the OPC server. But uh, beyond that, we also have a whole design environment where you can start actually using those, right? And so with that, up here in the top of the Gateway webpage, you can see this little button that says Get Designer, where you can actually uh, download Designer there locally, and then you can run it. I already have it installed for me, and so I'm just going to pull that over here. And one feature of our Designer Launcher is that you can be connected to a bunch of different gateways at once and see all the different applications there. I'm going to go ahead and connect up just to uh, my local install here. As this comes up here, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And sorry, it keeps coming up on the wrong screen here. So uh, I just have a sample project that is built out. I could also create a new project. I'm gonna do that real quick. We'll just call this one demo and we'll choose a project template to get us started. And with that, we'll go ahead and create this project. Now, our design environment here is not limited to just going and configuring the tag structure, but this is also where you would go and define the screens that you would build or to define history or alarms, alarm notification pipelines, uh, all your scripts, all that kind of stuff. So it's one unified design environment. You can see down here, I've got what's called my tag browser. And my tag browser is empty right now because I don't have any tags to find. If I wanted to add tags though, then I can come and hit this little uh, button up here and I could create individual tags. But what I want to do is I want to browse devices. And this is where I can see all those devices that you saw earlier. I can come in, I can see all those tags we saw earlier, and I could pull in individual tags, or in my case, I just wanna pull in the entire tags folder. You can see there, it says, hey, you really have 4,042 tags here that you're gonna be importing, and that's what I want, so I'm gonna say okay. I now have the tags here, and if I go into these, I can see the real-time values coming from that device. So I've got tags now, tags are great, but I can uh, go in here if I wanted to rename a tag, I could give it an alias up here. If I wanted to come in and say, I wanna store history on this tag, you know, I could come in and set up history and I want it to write to a Postgres database, or whatever data, SQL database I have connected, right? I wanna say, I want this to log on change um, or I want it to log it at a specific rate, so on. And so I can do all of that. If I was to store history, you can see that it's gonna add a little history icon there. I'm now storing history. Same idea, I could come in here and configure an alarm. So maybe on this one here, I want to come in here and say, yeah, I want a new alarm. And you know, I, I could give it whatever name I wanted here and a label and the display path. And really what it comes down to is what actually triggers this alarm. In my case, since this is a bit that I'm looking at, it could be equal to one or equal to zero, or I can actually go just to the bit state and when it's true or false, uh, all that kind of stuff. But really easy to come in here and configure alarm. So I'll just call this fault from site A and say, okay. And so now you can see that an alarm is configured on those. I can multi-select those. I can define alarms. I can also create a complex tag. So I create an object representing a motor, for example, and then I could build out those structures. They're reusable. I define alarms on one. It adds it to every instant and so on. So now with this being said, like I said, this design environment is also where I could create screens. And so I'll go ahead and create a screen real quick here. All I really wanted to show just for the sake of time is that I could come in and say, I want to view uh, this as a label or I want to display this as an LED display. You know, I could made it really big. There you go. You can see all the, the number there. Uh, same thing, I want to pull one of these values on. I could have it be a checkbox or I could have it be a toggle switch and so on. And so I can go and drag these out. I can build whatever screen I want. Uh, when I'm happy with my screen, it's easy to deploy these as well, save it, view it inside a web browser. And so uh, everything you pull out is going to have properties that you can 
come in here and bind to other tags, to SQL queries. Uh, you can come and change colors, all that kind of stuff. But this really establishes the building blocks, right? You can build out whatever screens you want, but what does it look like once you've actually built an entire application? For that, I'm gonna turn it over to William so that he can show that off a little bit. Uh, so William here, I'm gonna go ahead and make you presenter. Excellent, thanks, Kent. Okay, so, so what I've got here is I've got my gateway. As you can see, I've got a variety of PLCs currently on, in, configured on my gateway. However, I've only connected my FX3U. So the FX3U as of 8131 is the newest now available. Um, however, it does require uh, an FX ENET module to support. So what I've got here is I've got my connection to this FX3U and I've already configured my addresses. So I've taken my tags from my uh, GX works and I've been able to format it into a way where I've got my browse pass so Ignition can see automatically uh, the tag called VS default, but with the respective Mitsubishi register. So you can see I've got a variety of tags reconfigured, X registers for input, Y for output. Additionally, I've got some M registers, which are internal relays, as well as D registers for data regist registers. But can, you can also see here, I've categorized this PV angle as a float. So all tags will come in with a default data type and it's necessary to specify what data type you actually want to interpret as. So by this, what we're going to do is we're going to interpret the D102 register as a floating point. So from this, I've now got all my tags. So if I go over to my designer, I can see my tags have now come in. I've, I've dragged them in, in the same way that Kent did, and they've come in with those respective names. I've also enabled history on a couple of tags, i.e. PV angle, and you can also see it's coming as a floating point value. So what I have done, I'll jump back to the session and show you what I've built. So this is my perspective session which is a cyclone incline. And it's a very simple application, but all we want to do is drive this in to a position. So for the moment, we're sitting at position zero. If I set a target of 180 and start, my PLC is going to drive the motor to the position. So all I've done is set up a simple trend so we can see the previous history but also we can manually control it through jogging. So if I want to jog reverse or forward, it will go into its position. So this is using a uh, flex container where I've specified this to be one flex and this to be a flex. So if I go to my design and I can show you how this all comes together. I've got my main view with a root flex container specifying my header, another container that just separates the header from all the content. And I've specified my incline settings as a flex and my history as a flex. The history just contains a power chart, which has a predefined tag structure. However, on the session as it's a power chart, users could add more uh, tags if they wanted to. Additionally, over here in my settings, I've got a numerous data points. So my position, which is directly bound on a label, the PV angle, angle PV. I then have my status, a target with a set point, which is a bi-directional binding to my set point. A multi-state button with bi-directional control. And then my two jog buttons with scripted control. Lastly, we have an animation here, which is just an SVG. And we're able to control the position of that rotation on here, this angle property. So if I go one last time, run you through, I could change this to minus 120, start, and my PLC is gonna process that for me. So this is a quick demo, putting together a very small application, but you could quickly roll this out as a template through either a the embedded view structures, or even something like a flex repeater in the system. And if you had multiple machines doing the same thing around your plant, you could easily very quickly build out with this template structure, 
your facility.